you know, if you Google search this fighter, his name is Francis Ngannou, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, or you can just type MMA fighter or UFC fighter, Francis, F-A-R, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, Francis Ngannou, I-G-O-N-N-O-U, okay. This guy is from Africa and uh, he's a heavyweight fighter and he is known for one of the most vicious knockouts in the world. Uh, be careful before you watch this video, it's definitely on YouTube. Check out how he knocked out Alistair Overeem. He hit him so hard, I can't show you the photograph, it's too graphic. That guy's lip completely tore off, you could see his flesh and poof, knocked him out. He, you know, if he hits you once and by if his fist touches any part of your body, you're gone. He's a beast of a human being. Now, the funny thing about him is, in a nutshell, I'll give you, his past. He was born in Africa. He was from the poorest of the poor, where he had to, you know, dig holes and he used to work in construction sites and dig wells and very, very poor, very poor, where they didn't have water to drink. And obviously, he, as a refugee, went abroad and uh, tried to get a life and he was interested in boxing. So he learned boxing when he was free, but because he didn't have money, uh, you know, he would ask them, can I do something in exchange for training? So either people would take him in for free and train him uh, in exchange for some work or they would subsidize, whatever. So through that, he rose up to uh, become not only a fighter, he got into MMA and uh, lo and behold, he did what people thought would be impossible. He became the world heavyweight champion, okay, UFC heavyweight champion of the world. And the first time initially because of lack of experience he lost, but uh, the second time uh, he not only became, but he defended it. And imagine he is known to have the hardest punch in MMA history. So hard that it can almost break your bone or your kill you, it'll almost kill you, is that strong. Now, why am I bringing his story here is, this guy, you see UFC is a fight promotion and an organization. Obviously, they are a business entity, they want to exploit the fighters and make maximum money. So if you're a fighter, if your value is Let's say, for example, you generate a uh, revenue of 10 million. I'm not going to pay you 10 million. I might pay you 1 million or forget 1 million. I might pay you even half a million. That's how business works. And obviously, if you are a cash cow, then I'll rope you into partnership. And But always I will have the upper hand because I'm an organization. So that is why fighters have managers and all that. Now this guy, his first fight was hardly for free, then for food, then thousand dollars. And he started off like that to the extent where before he would leave the organization UFC, he, he was offered the highest contract, the most expensive contract, more than the WWE superstar Brock Lesnar who was also a fighter. I think uh, 10 million, per guaranteed purse and plus box office revenue and which would go to 20, maybe 10, 20, 30 million, whatever. They offered him the highest. Dana White said, I offered him the highest. Okay. Uh, we don't know the exact specific amount, but he was offered a very high amount. He said no. He waited for his contract to expire because there's a non-competing clause and now he's a free agent. So he put out the notice, I'm a free agent, I'm looking out. So many organizations, the Premier Fighting League, one championship, which is the owner is a Thai person, a very smart guy, then bare knuckle championship. They all approached him and said, we would like to, uh, you join. Ah, one very important thing before I forget. When he was asked why you're not signing with the UFC, he said, it's not about money. I'm not crazy about money. I'm crazy about fighters' rights. I'm crazy. Uh, I'm, I want fighters' rights. I want 
equal rights i want health insurance for all fighters means he was going beyond himself you're saying i want everyone to be treated equally i want everyone's salaries to be increased i want this uh, many many demands like he was becoming like a politician you're jesus christ so ufc you know i'm talking about you you can't tell me increase everyone's salary and uh, you can't make me dance and dana white had tried to negotiate with this guy for 2 years imagine 2 years being signed with him okay uh so when he joined this new organizations he put a twitter the thing i'm not interested in money i'm interested in other things like legacy and you know all that bullshit they talk now the first fighting organization to approach him i think was either bellator they tried to approach him but they the talks fell off nobody knows why they said uh, there were rumors that he asked for too much money okay fine bellator is a competitor of ufc bare knuckle championship which is fighting without gloves they approached him but they said he's too expensive he is asking unrealistic money they didn't state how much i'm pretty sure he must have asked 20 30 million then one championship approached him and uh, most probably they were going to sign up with him but then the owner of one championship the thai guy uh, chitra or something very long name yes ceo he said no the deal has fallen off so he just said that he said uh, i wish him all the best diplomatic answer francis ngano instead of being gracious he responded by calling this guy a two face by putting a two face you know the batman character two face so uh, the one championship ceo got pissed off he said i offered this guy 20 million us dollars per fight or something plus other benefits but this guy wants to be part of the board of our organization plus he wants to determine how much a fighter will get paid plus he wants to know um what how much are we giving other people so many other things like he was asking for the sun moon and stars okay and uh, now one by one what is happening is all the organizations are saying no thank you we don't need you. now why am i speaking about this guy see this is the common problem and success goes to your head and you think you are invincible this guy francis ngano is in his 30s 36 if you evaluate that in fighter years may don't mind uh, i'll be stopping when means i'll pause a little bit when these people uh pass by it's always a problem wait they are selling one second let them move this is how they sell stuff in thailand hmm. Okay, so what I was saying was, um, see, in fighter years, no, when you cross thirties is very peak, thirty to forty. Very rarely does any fighter peak after forty. Like a George Foreman is very rare. That is why, if you see, um, uh, uh, you know, Mike Tyson today and all that, he's a former shell of himself. Uh, he, he fought with the, I don't know, there's an exhibition bout. I can't get that guy's name here. Uh, legendary boxer you see their bodies are sagging and they put on a lot of fat and they are not the same fighters unless of course you take trt or steroids or whatever testosterone replacement therapy and the body goes through wear and tear your joints they get damaged your back your that is why if you see uh, ww wrestlers hulk hogan had back surgery just google search hulk hogan back surgery you'll see he has metal plates in his back they have a knee replacement oh uh, so many some people when they wake up in the morning their whole body is aching so much they take at least half an hour just to sit seriously huh? wwe wrestlers and fighters that is why floyd mayweather said i'm a smart fighter he's always a defensive i doesn't want to get hit because there are many people who have got hit and they can't remember they become like vegetable you know because ct damage to the brain Okay, so Francis Ngannou has already gone through a leg operation. His age is 36 plus. On top of that, you know, you're 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 reaching your 
you have already reached your peak and now you're moving towards a decline. And then, see, he, the problem with him is he forgot his roots. When he started, he was a nothing and nobody. Okay. UFC gave him the platform. Obviously, hype videos and all that. Fine, he became something. Fine, he gave UFC something. It's a give and take. But now, you're left at organization. At least grab something and grab something reasonable. See, always I tell people, take what the market rate is offering you. Let's say, for example, in his case, he wants 50 million. I'm just saying. And the market is willing to offer him 30 is the highest. So that is your price. You can't say, no, I'm only worth 50 million. Because they have to run an organization. That is one. The second problem is, you focus on you, man. Why the hell are you worried about, I want other fighters to get equal salary. I want all the fighters to get insurance. Why are you bothered about other people? This is the overconfidence, arrogance and ignorance people have once they start becoming famous. They start focusing on social issues. Tomorrow if he loses all his money or he's uh, nothing and nobody, you think all those fighters he was fighting for are going to come and say, hey, we support you. Hey, you stood up for us. Hey, we are there for you. No, they will mind their own business. He's being a bloody idiot here. And then, on top of that, you have to be a professional when you negotiate. If you went for a negotiation and things don't work out, keep quiet. Don't tell anyone about it. Because then what happens is you start bad-mouthing each other online. Nobody wants to deal with such a human being. Nobody wants to deal with such an employee. All these organizations have realized this guy is asking for the sun, moon and stars, like unrealistic money. And he's uncooperative at the same time he has this uh, big head like the celebrities have. You lose respect, man. It's so stupid, yeah. And then the final bit. Asking what doesn't concern you, it doesn't matter. He wants to be part of the board. He wants to control how much fighters get paid. He wants to make the decision for the organization. He wants... Just take your goddamn money and keep your mouth shut, no? See, I'll tell you what is going to happen. See, you are in demand until a certain point of time. After some time, people start forgetting you. And it has been two years since UFC tried to negotiate. And I think it has been, what, uh, one year? Not one year. Maybe a couple of months since he last fought uh, and his surgery and all that. Or maybe a year. You know, if you don't fight, then you get... Your body wear and tear takes up. Some people can manage, but those are very rare. And as you grow older, you're no longer the same fighter that you used to be. No longer the same human being. And just imagine, that guy in his 20s and 30s was a wrecking machine. Think of any superstar who you admired when they were young. When they become older, they become slow, man. The body starts recuperating slower, it heals le less fast. Uh, your joints are not like soft as they used to. Your bones are not as durable as before. And your training day and night. This guy is making, he's destroying his career. To the extent where, I can assure you this, that uh, if he doesn't sign up something fast and doesn't appear relevant, his uh, money-making days will go less and less and less and another problem is if he doesn't join a premier organization a premium really high hardcore then your value decreases yeah you know your value decreases if you are with the a-lister organization your value will always be at the top he has already said no to UFC which is number one Bellator which is number two um, then there is all this small one, one championship and bare knuckle and bare knuckle is okay, it's just starting. But all the premier organizations, now you have said no. Who's left? Who's going to take you? Who has the money to give you? And you start pissing off the big guys. Let me tell you, bugger off. I just feel at some point this guy will realize nobody gives a fuck about him. And then obviously that itch is there. 
Maybe money he has 100 million in the bank, he doesn't have to worry. Maybe sooner or later he'll be like, okay, I'll just agree for, okay, not 30 million, 20 million. Maybe he'll agree for 10 million. Eventually he'll have to agree for some amount, but it'll not be at the peak. Because now his demand is less and if he loses, bye-bye. If, see, if you lose, then you're no longer in demand. And in his case, the thing that stood out the best about him was his knockout power. That is what made him amazing. And yes, wrestling. But if there is a fighter who can analyze him and take advantage of his other weaknesses or whatever, and if he loses, if he does lose, and he has lost in the past, then finished. If there was a worthwhile message I could give you through this video is, don't let success get your head here. Don't let money get your head. It's very hard. It's very hard for, I'll tell you, even for me, when success and money I earned, it also went to my head. I'm talking about my younger days. Today, bloody grounded because I know the realities of life. That is why so many of these fighters, when they're young, they are so hot-headed and they blow money left, right and center. Thankfully, Francis Ngannou is not doing that. But uh, you're being too arrogant here. Yeah. The world doesn't give a fuck about you and it'll continue. There have been so many fighters whom organizations thought, oh, because this guy left, this organization will collapse. They continue. So anyway, I don't know if you follow this guy, but if you do, just check some of the stuff that I said about him and let me know, what do you think? Do you think he should stay stubborn and not agree to anything lower? Or should he have that maturity to know when to tweet and when to keep his mouth shut and, you know, take, take what is available, take the best deal. Don't keep waiting forever, man. It's stupid if you wait forever because opportunities wait for no person here. <laughs> anyway, this is what I wanted to tell you. He is a good fighter, but he's a very bad businessman. And here's the one final thing. Whomsoever he had a relationship with, he ended up breaking up with them. He is from Africa when he came to Europe and his first trainer who trained him to help achieve the championship, he broke off with them and they had a very bad taste in the mouth. He joined the UFC, he ended up breaking up with them. Now they have a bad taste in their mouth. And now whomsoever he's meeting, all of them have a bad taste in their mouth. You're only famous as long as you're relevant. One day, bye-bye, nobody will care. Anyway, that's all I want to tell you. You let me know your thoughts, agree, disagree. I'd love to know what you think. All right, you guys take care. Ciao. Oh.